What's going on everybody? This is Island Hopper TV and today we're going to talk about things to know when you come to beautiful Guatemala. Let's do it. Let's talk about places to go, things to see and do. So the big three, I would say Lake Atitlan, and when it comes to how much time you want to spend here and check out all the villages, some people would say four days, some people would say a whole week, and some people actually end up staying longer for retreats and eco uh, getaways. Places like San Juan, there's also uh, San Marcos, Santa Catarina, Santiago, many different villages all around Lake Atitlan that people like to explore. That's probably the main thing because there's volcanoes and it's a beautiful lake. Uh, then there's Antigua, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So this is a old Spanish city dating all the way back to 1500s. Before the Spanish were here, it was the Mayans who were living there. So lots of history in Antigua. Another place that people like to go is to the north, to Lechua. Now getting up to Lechua is not easy because it's uh, isolated. It's up there towards Chiapas, Mexico. Then there's uh, Tikal, the ruins. The Mayan ruins in the north, so plenty of places uh, to get to, but some of them are harder than others. There's Semak Chongpi, which is a beautiful turquoise colored water. People like to go there. There's also uh, some places on the coast like Livingston on the Caribbean side. And then there's some places uh, down towards the Pacific side that you'll want to check out. You get a chance, but most people prefer to go to El Salvador for the beaches, but you can do some fishing on the Pacific coast of Guatemala. Then there's a few Mayan markets that you'll want to explore if you're really looking for real culture. What do they have in those markets? There's the biggest one in Central America, Chichi Castanenca. Uh, so I'm sorry if I didn't get that right with the spelling or the pronunciation, but you guys can look it up. Anyways, plenty of places to see and do. Write all those down if you want. Uh, but the big ones uh, that you'll see, the big three, Tikal, there's Antigua and Lake Atitlan. Those are the big three that most people come for. If you guys come over here and look at this actual diagram here, you can see some of the areas you can go visit around here. You've got Lago Atitlan, which is where we're at now. You've got uh, Mayan ruins in Honduras, Antigua right there. Uh, you've got Chichi Castanenco, Rio Dulce, Tikal, San Cristobal de las Casas, which is right there in Chiapas. So there's a list of things. Let's talk about money and finance here in Guatemala. They use the currency called quetzales. It's actually the name of the bird. But if you look at the money here, you can see they've got the parliament and several Mayan uh, insignias on this money. This is a quetzales, this is 50. The $1 equals seven quetzales. So 50 is around $15. That's how much it would be valued at if I were to spend it. Now, when you go to the ATMs, they're readily available all across the country. They also do take U.S. dollars in tourist areas. But if you plan to go outside of tourist areas into the remote parts of Guatemala, bring quetzales. So I thought I'd put that out there. Uh, in terms of cost and price, I would say Guatemala is a bit cheaper than places like Costa Rica and probably about the same as Mexico, maybe a little bit cheaper. Like tonight, for example, I'm staying in a $45 uh, hotel, so two rooms for about $90. That's including tax. Uh, this is in Antigua. Right now we're at the Plaza Mayor, right here in the heart of Antigua, Guatemala, which was the original capital, actually, of the empire of Guatemala, which was all of Central America. All right, let's talk about transportation in Guatemala, getting around. The only international airport that most people arrive in is in Guatemala City. It's pretty much the only one you're gonna have access to, so keep that in mind. When you wanna get around to some of these other places like Guatemala City, to the north, to Lechua, or to uh, maybe even to Call, or some of these other areas, it can take up to eight to 14 hours in a car. Even though it looks like a small country, it takes a long time because you're going through these windy roads. But that being said, those windy roads lead to uh, not just altitude sickness, but also motion sickness. Uh, when you're on places like Lake Atitlan, uh, instead of using a car to get around, people use a boat. Uh, but there's also Uber here in this country. Some people might take an Uber from Guatemala City till 
to Atitlan, although that's not recommended uh, for multiple different reasons. One of them being motion sickness. You wanna get a really good car for that as you're going through the windy mountains to get out here. It takes about three hours, not too far, but uh, I would recommend pre-arranging a shuttle. Uh, when you're in the big city like Guatemala City, they have a modern bus system, but that's about it. No train or tram to speak of. Uh, so I would say what you wanna do is do a little bit of research, pre-planning, Try and find somebody to help you with transportation when you get here. If you do decide to get a rental car, you're a pretty brave person if you're gonna do that here in Guatemala. But I think you could do it. The roads are in decent shape in most areas. They love their speed bumps, I will say that. One more thing, tuk-tuks are a fun way to get around Guatemala, and especially many of these towns in Atitlan or even Antigua. Yeah, so when you come to Guatemala, you're definitely gonna wanna indulge in some of the varieties of the cuisine they have here. So let's show you some of the stuff they've got on the menu across Guatemala. You can see, here's an example of what they've got. So one of the best Guatemalan dishes you can get is pepion. This is a Guatemalan stew. So a typical Guatemalan plate, I got papas, which is potatoes, frijoles, which is beans, guacamole, some carne, a little bit of chicken, and some, uh, looks like a plantain or maybe a sweet potato. And plenty of tortillas. Look at all the tortillas right here. We got some hibiscus juice here. They have a wide variety of nuts, but you might notice that I do typically eat my fair share of carne. Uh, but they also have a variety of different dishes that you may want to try out, like soups, as I already showed you, but there's more than just one. There's seafood soups. Also, maybe even some insects in some of these communities, but lots and lots of fish is what the Mayan diet consists of. Let's talk fun facts. So the Quetzales, the currency that they use, it's named after the bird, Quetzales. It's a green bird, beautiful bird. You'll probably want to go bird watching and see it. Uh, that's what I found to be interesting is that the currency is named after a bird. Uh, the next thing that's interesting is Guatemala actually means green land or green area, green place. Another thing that you'll want to know is that there's over 40 volcanoes here in Guatemala. That's a lot of volcanoes. This is a very volcanic place. Another thing uh, to keep in mind about fun facts is that 22 different languages are spoken across the country. Most of them are a variety of different Mayan dialects. Uh, with that being said, 60% of the country is of Mayan descent. You know, here's a good opportunity to talk about clothes. I got an authentic Guatemalan hat here. I also got an authentic shirt uh, made of cotton. Most of uh, everything they have here is made of cotton, not really wool or anything else. Uh, also, their dyes are organic. But you can see, just here's an example of some of the Gu uh, Guatemalan clothing. Uh, each Mayan village around Lake Atilan has different clothing, different headdresses for the women. Uh, you can really tell a difference if you pay close attention. So. Uh, the clothes they wear here, you might end up wanting to wear some of it, like a poncho or something like that. One thing I'll say, don't be surprised if you see a lot of stray animals. Look at these dogs right here. There's strays, there's also lots of stray cats, chickens walking around, so that's what you're going to get out here. Let's talk weather, climate, and mother nature. First thing I want to say is, earthquakes do happen here quite often. As I said, it's seismic, it's volcanic, lots of volcanoes which means there's going to be earthquakes. So if you feel the ground shaking, that's pretty common around here. If you see a volcano going off, puffing in Antigua, that's common, it happens quite frequently. The best time to actually visit Guatemala is from November to April. The rainy season is from May to October. So uh, plan accordingly. If you don't mind the uh, rain, then come during that period. But for the most part, uh, all across Guatemala, it's a spring climate. That means the weather is typically like spring, except for when you're down on the Caribbean or on the Pacific coast, maybe you'll get a little bit different uh, climate than you get up in the highlands. With that being said, when you go up into the highlands, expect some altitude sickness or possibly altitude sickness because uh, when you're walking, uh, hiking at 10,000 feet elevation, 7,000 feet elevation, if your body's not used to that, you're gonna feel it, it's gonna hit you. So. Uh, plan accordingly with that kind of information that I just gave you. And we just talked about motion sickness on the road, so keep that in mind. All right, so something to know about safety in Guatemala. I've been now to Guatemala City, Antigua, and now Lake Atitlan. As you can see, I'm standing on the pier here in Santiago, and I will tell you that 
yes, there are dangerous areas in Guatemala City, uh, but most of Guatemala City is really safe. But there are certain areas, just like in New York and Los Angeles, that you should not go. But uh, Guatemala has a rap of being unsafe. I mean, even before I came here, I saw all these travel warnings about crime and everything. And so far, my experience here in Guatemala, assuming you follow basic standard tourist guidelines, you know, don't go out late at night or get involved in hard drugs or something like that, it's safe. I mean, it's a really safe place. I was actually surprised at how safe it was compared to what I was reading online. So uh, if you're worried about safety, obviously follow basic travel guidelines, you know, that you would follow in Europe or follow anywhere else. But don't do anything dumb, like get in cars late at night with people uh, in t strange taxis, and you'll be totally fine out here. I've noticed that the people are actually really friendly. My overall review of Guatemala is this. I am looking forward to go back there and explore it. The hardest part is the transportation. Uh, probably wanting to get around by puddle jumpers. If you go from Guatemala City, take a puddle jumper to uh, Tikal. I would not really recommend doing too much driving, and if you do, make sure it's on a sleeper bus. Uh, like I said, Guatemala looks small on the map, but it's taking time to get around the country. I mean, to go two to 300 miles can take up to 14, 15 hours. You'd be surprised. But like I said, I definitely look forward to going back to Guatemala. Thanks to everyone who watches these videos, subscribes to this channel, and likes them. We'll see you on the next one.